Welcome to Pre-Math. In this video tutorial, we are going to find the partial fraction decomposition of this given rational expression. And this is our episode 23. Let's go ahead and focus on the denominator over here, x power 4 minus 1. As we can see that this binomial can be furthermore factored out. And as you can see that I have copied down this binomial over here, x power 4 minus 1. Let's go ahead and factor it out. Let's, let me just show you how we're going to manipulate this x power 4. x power 4 could be written as x square and then power 2 and then 1 could be written as 1 square. Now as we can see that we got the difference of two squares. So therefore we are going to use this fact a square minus b square equal to a minus b times a plus b. So we are going to factor this one out using that fact, that formula. I can write this one as x square minus 1 times x square plus 1. So far so good. And now once again this part over here, the one that I am going to put in a box over here, we are going to factor it furthermore. This could be written as this part only. This could be written as x square minus 1 could be written as 1 square. Once again this is a difference of Two squares so we are going to use this fact once again so let's go ahead and do that one and that is going to give us x minus 1 times x plus 1 so far so good and we are going to bring this one down as well so this is x square plus 1 so therefore this rational expression could be written as 1 over the denominator could be written as in a factored form x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x square plus 1. So far so good. And now as we can see that we got two linear factors at the denominator, they are non-repeating and the next one is irreducible quadratic factor. So therefore we are going to do the partial fraction decomposition and I'm going to put down three fractions. First one separated by plus sign, second one and then finally third one. Let's write it down at the denominator x minus 1, then x plus 1, and finally x square plus 1. And now let's focus on the numerator on the top for these linear factors. We're going to put constant a for the second fraction constant b. And since we are dealing with this quadratic factor, I am going to put down c times x plus d. And now our task is to find the values of these constants a, b, c, and d. And now here is our next step. Let's focus on the denominator part over here, this whatever, this blah blah blah. I am going to multiply this one across the board. Let me just go ahead and multiply out with each and every fraction. x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. Likewise with this one x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. Likewise x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1 and finally x minus 1 times x plus 1 times x squared plus 1. So far so good and now this x minus 1 cancels out with this x minus 1 x plus 1 is gone with this x plus 1 x squared plus 1 
he has gone with this x square plus 1 so we are ended up with simply 1 on the left hand side equals to on the right hand side as you can see this x minus 1 is gone with this x minus 1 so we got on the right hand side a times x plus 1 times x square plus 1 and then let's look at the second fraction on the right hand side this x plus 1 is gone with this x plus 1 so we got plus b times x minus 1 times x square plus 1 and as you can see on this third one over here this quadratic factors they cancel out so we are ended up with plus cx plus d times x minus 1 times x plus 1 and I am going to call this one as an equation number 1 and now we have a quick trick look for linear factors in the denominator let's focus on these on the left hand side we got two linear factors x minus 1 and x plus 1 I am going to copy them down right up here x minus 1 and the other one on the other side x plus 1 I am going to set both of them equal to 0 so I'm going to get one of x value is going to be positive 1 and the other one is going to be negative 1 and now let's focus on this x equal to 1 value and I here I wrote down put x equal to 1 in this equation 1 that means wherever we see x we are going to replace it by 1 so let's go ahead and do that one on the left hand side we are going to put 1 equal to a time I'm going to replace x by 1 so 1 plus 1 and times 1 square plus 1 and now let's focus on this x when we replace this x by 1 1 minus 1 is going to give us 0 0 times that means this whole term is going to become 0 likewise when we replace this x over here by 1 minus 1 is going to give us 0 0 times this whole term is going to become 0 as well so therefore I am going to write down plus 0 and plus 0 as well so let's simplify it furthermore 1 equal to a times this is 2 1 plus 1 is 2 1 square is same as 1 plus 1 is 2 that is going to give us 1 equals to 4a that means a is going to have a 1 over 4 value and now let's focus on x equal to negative 1 value and therefore I wrote down put x equal to negative 1 in this equation 1 that means wherever we see x we are going to replace it by negative 1 so let's go ahead and do this one so the left hand side we're going to have a 1 on the left hand side equals to let's look at over here this a times when I replace this x by negative 1 and then we have a plus 1 that's going to make it a 0 so that means 0 times this whole term is going to become 0 all right so I'm going to write down 0 plus and then we are going to put down this one over here plus b times x being replaced by negative 1 and negative 1 and then we have negative 1 square plus 1 and then plus and right over here once again this one as you can see when I replace this x by negative 1 and this is plus 1 that going to make it 0 0 time this whole term is going to become 0 
So I am going to write down plus zero over here. Let's go ahead and now simplify it furthermore. So I can write one equal to B times this is going to become negative two and this negative one square is same as one. One plus one is going to make two. That means we got one equal to negative four B. That means B is going to be equal to negative one over four value. And as we can see that we figured out A and B values, but we still need to find out C and D values. Therefore, we need to perform some few extra steps. So we are going to look at this equation number one. So number one, I am going to write down one on the left hand side. And here I am going to file that. I'm going to multiply these two parentheses. So first of all, A times, let's go ahead and do pretty quick. So X times X squared is going to become X power three. And this is going to make plus X and then plus one X squared and then plus one times one is going to be plus one and plus then b times likewise i'm going to use a foil method like we did in the previous one so that is going to give us x power three plus x minus x square minus one and plus cx plus d times we know the difference of two square this that the product of sum and the difference is always going to give us x square minus one all right and let's go furthermore on the left hand side one and here i am going to distribute a across the board over here that's going to become a x power 3 plus a x plus a x square plus 1 a likewise i am going to do the same thing over here as well that is going to give us b x power 3 plus b x minus b x square minus b and finally we are going to do c x times this is going to give us plus c x power 3 minus c x and likewise d x square plus d x square minus d now let's go ahead and combine the like terms on the right hand side we still have a one on the left hand side i'm going to leave one on the left hand side on the right hand side is going to become a plus b plus c times x power three plus for x squared is going to become a minus b plus d times x square and then for plus x part is going to become a minus a plus b and then minus c times x and finally for the constant is going to be a minus b minus d and as we can see on the left hand side x power 3 x power 2 and x terms are missing so i can write this one as 0 x power 3 plus 0 x square plus 0 x and then plus 1. 
And now in our next step, we are going to equate or sometimes we call it compare the coefficients on both sides of this above equation. So let's go ahead and get started for x power 3 term on the left hand side our coefficient for x power 3 is 0. On the right hand side this is a plus b plus c. I'm going to equate them. I can write down 0 equal to a plus b plus c and for the x square term on the left hand side the coefficient is 0 on the right hand side is a minus b plus d I'm going to equate them I'm going to write down 0 equal to a minus b plus d and for the x term on the left hand side the coefficient is 0 on the right hand side a plus b minus c I am going to equate them as well so 0 equal to a plus b minus c on the right hand side and for the constant term on the left hand side we got 1 we are going to equate it on the right hand side which is a minus b minus d and now let's go ahead and find the value of d in this constant part I can write this equation as if I separate d d could be written as a minus b minus 1 and let's figure plug in the values of a is 1 over 4 and b is negative 1 over 4 so d equals to a is 1 over 4 minus b is negative 1 over 4 and then minus 1 if we simplify these one that is going to give us d equals to negative 1 over 2 and now let's find the value of c in this x part this equation let's let me write it down so this equation could be written as I can put c equal to a plus b and we know that a is 1 over 4 and plus b is negative 1 over 4 and that means c is going to give us zero so that's pretty much it so thus our a value turns out to be a 1 over 4 b is negative 1 over 4 c equal to 0 and d is negative 1 over 2 so therefore in our partial fraction decomposition wherever i see a i am going to replace it by 1 over 4 b by negative 1 over 4 c by 0 and d by negative 1 over 2 and here is partial fraction decomposition once a b c and d has been replaced with their own values and here is our final answer thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos bye